Hello everyone, my name is Travis. I'm going to be taking us through our warm up today. You will not need any equipment except definitely want to have some water near you. It's always good to stay hydrated during your workout and after. So, without further ado, we're just going to jump right in. Our first exercise is going to be a march. So, for our march, we're going to drive our knees up and we just want to make sure we're clearing our feet off of the mat. And I'm also swinging my arms here and I'm just really trying to focus on not moving my trunk to the left or to the right too much. And just really focus on driving those knees up, bring them up as high as we can get them. And the speed at which you do this will determine how intense it feels. Uh, we're just starting here, so it might be a great idea to start slow. And then as we progress a little bit, start getting in some faster, higher marches in like this. Take some nice deep breaths. Really get that oxygen flowing through our body here this morning. And just five more seconds, we're going to move into side steps. And four, three two, and one. So now I'm sidestepping and tapping with the opposite foot. Sidestepping, tapping with the opposite foot. And again, the speed at which you complete this is going to determine how intense it is for you. And we're just going to add in some windshield wipers. So I'm just throwing my hands up as I step, get my whole body moving, get it active, feel the burn. Yep, we're getting excited. Make sure to take some nice deep breaths, of course. Keep your head nice and straight. And we're trying not to do any unnecessary movements. Great job. Five more seconds, we're gonna move back into our march. Four, three, two, and one. We're going back to marches, but this time we're gonna add in some strengthening exercises. So now we're gonna stop using our hands and instead we're gonna take our hands at our shoulders as we continue to march and push them above our head. We're gonna do that shoulder press. We should feel that here in our shoulders and we're just moving straight up and we're trying not to lean forward and keep our marches as nice as we can. We're going to go for 10. We've done two so far. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. And we're just going to move back into our side steps in three, two, and one. And as we do these side steps, we're going to add in a bicep strengthening exercise. So the bicep is the front part of your upper arm. And so we're just going to start with our elbows fully extended and then nice, slow, and controlled. Bring them up, bring our fists up to our shoulders. And here, the slower that you let your hands drop, the harder this is going to be. So kind of pick your poison on intensity there. And we're just keeping up that side step to get that blood flowing. Good. Some nice deep breaths still. Also here, we can think about clenching our abdominals just a bit. Keep our back nice and straight as we do these bicep curls. Some nice deep breaths, just five more seconds. And three, two, and one. Phenomenal work, everyone. We're gonna move into another strength exercise. This one is going to be called a row. So what we do for a row here, I'm gonna show you from the side, it'll be a little easier to understand what I'm saying. We're gonna bend at the hips as we keep our feet about shoulder width apart, our knees slightly bent, and we're just folding forward. And as we do this, we wanna clench those abdominals, protect our spine, definitely. Pop our shoulders back, pop our chest a little bit, and keep a nice, strong, tight back. So what I'm gonna do here is put my arms out right in front of me like this and just pull my elbows in a straight line back behind me. I want you to imagine someone's pulling with a string on your elbows. Create a nice controlled motion with this. I'm gonna do this 15 times. And if you'd like to make this more challenging, you can hold that contraction at the top. But I'm just gonna do some regular reps. That was seven, so it's eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Phenomenal work, everyone. We're going to go into another strength exercise now. This is going to be our side lunges. So a side lunge is essentially, we're going to imagine just taking a straight step to our left and then a little bit of a squat on our one leg here, which is our stable tree trunk. And then this leg is kind of just like resting on the floor here. And that's a side lunge. And it's really important here to keep a nice straight line between both of our feet, keep a nice straight back, our shoulders are down and back, our chest is puffed up, and our abdominals are clenched. We really want to protect the spine as we move here. And we're doing 10 reps. That was my third. So we have seven more. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. We're going to do the same thing, other side. So now our other leg is going to be the one just resting on the floor. We take our nice tree trunk leg, stable squat into that leg. Do a little side lunge. We really should be feeling that in our groin and our inner hips. 
Okay, we're gonna do 10 more reps. And the intensity of this exercise is really gonna be determined by how far down you go. Should have mentioned that on the other side, but obviously just go to where you feel comfortable. I have not been taking the step there, so definitely wanna get those steps in with these side lunges. We're not just rocking on our leg like I was just doing. Sorry, I was too focused on giving that modification that I forgot. Remember, just take some nice deep breaths. We just have three more. Three, two, and one. Very good. If you need to take a break, get some water, totally fine. I'm gonna explain our next exercise. So what we're gonna do for this next one is this is gonna be a bit challenging on our balance. So just a precursor, if you feel like you might not have the best balance, this could be a good time to get a chair and just put it right in front of you right here. And you're gonna figure out why in just one second. So this exercise is called standing abduction. We're really working on the outside of our hips and our glutes, which is our backside. So basically, hands on the hips, and what we wanna do here, so now my left leg here is going to be our tree trunk, our stabilizer. This one's not going to move. My right leg, I'm just lifting it to my side, as high as I can get it, that's comfortable. How high you go, it's going to determine the intensity here for us for this exercise. And then also, if you want to make it, bring it up to our level two, you can lower your leg nice and slowly and really focus on that. That's going to be pretty difficult, but if you're in the mood for a challenge, go for it. So we're doing eight reps on each side. So I'm lifting my leg and I'm bringing it back down. And I'm creating a smiley face with my toes. I want to imagine drawing a nice straight, well, not straight, but you know, a line with my toes. I don't want to be moving forward and back too much. And again, if you have that chair there, this is a good opportunity to just put your hands on that chair. Just four more on this side. Three, two, and one. Phenomenal. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So now we have our tree trunk legs, the opposite leg. And again, hands on chair if you need. And then we're just kicking our leg out. Up and down, nice and controlled. Again, if you want to lower that slower, that'll bring up the intensity for us. And just three more. Three, two, and one. Phenomenal work, everyone. So next, we're gonna move into our calf raises. So for our calf raises, we have two options. You can do this on one leg at a time, or you can do it with both legs. If you do it on one leg, this is definitely going to be a balance challenge for you, so definitely have that chair at the ready. Basically, all we're doing is coming up, see it from the side, coming up onto our toes, just like this. We wanna make sure we're not rocking, kind of like letting momentum take us. It's not gonna be great for our ankles. We wanna drive those heels up in a straight line. Just like that, again, you can do it on one leg if you want, but that's gonna be a balance challenge. And we're just going for 15 reps. I've done about six, so nine more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice work, everyone. Hope your calves are burning a little bit. Okay, next, we're gonna move into a squat. So to set up our squat, we're gonna stand about shoulder width apart, have a nice athletic stance, meaning we have a slight bend in our knees and our hips. I wanna make sure that I'm not leaning too far forward as I squat, but I'm not, when we come back up from the squat, we're gonna do it much. So let me show you what this looks like. Basically, I'm coming down into my squat, and I'm picking up one leg and I'm marching. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So here we're working on a squat, but then we're also exercising our hip flexors by bringing those legs up, and we're gonna do 10 times. And again, as you squat, don't forget to clench your abdominals and really just focus on that spot because we really want to protect it. Good, and don't forget to take some nice deep breaths. As we do this, that was five, we're halfway there. And you can have your hands out, you can have your hands in, whatever makes you feel comfortable. And again, the intensity on this exercise will be determined on how far down you go, like our side lunge. Just two more on each leg, almost there. Keep pushing. Don't forget about that spine. Those nice deep breaths. Good job, go ahead and stop. Okay, and we're gonna move into another leg exercise. This one is going to be a lunge. So, for our lunge, what we're gonna to wanna to do, stand feet shoulder width apart, nice leg stance again. And we wanna just step forward with one leg as we drop this back knee. I'll show you from the side a little better. We're gonna step forward with one leg and then drop our back knee towards the ground and step back. And so for this exercise, the further you step away from your, the leg that you're gonna be dropping down, the harder the lunge is gonna be. And same with the timing. The slower you go, the more difficult you, it'll be, okay? So kind of pick your intensity based on how you're feeling right now. 
and we're just going to do five lunges on each side. Again, pick your range of motion, wherever it feels comfortable, but it's very important here that we're not leaning to the left or to the right, to the front or to the back. We're coming nice straight down. I'm driving that knee down. I'm keeping my trunk nice and straight. I'm coming back onto both feet like this. Good work. This is our third one over here. Coming back. Third one on this side. Don't forget about our abdominals. We're clenching those bad boys to protect our low back. We're taking some nice deep breaths. We're looking and feeling amazing. It's a great day to be alive, everyone. Keep up the good work. This is our last one on our right leg. We're going to go for our last one on our left leg. Ooh, baby. Good job. All right. We're going to move to our next exercise. This is called a good morning in the textbooks. But basically, this is going to be for our low back and our rector spinae, if you're familiar. But what we're going to do here, stand in our squat setup position, athletic stance. And I'll show you from the side a little bit better angle, of course. And I'm just going to lean forward, not moving anything but my hip joint, essentially. And coming back up. And for this one, similar to our squat and our lunge, how far down you go and the speed at which you execute this will determine how hard it feels for you. So truly, you just want to go based on how you feel today. You want to definitely challenge yourself, but you definitely don't want to make this too challenging. And especially because we're working on our low back here, we want to just really listen to our body, okay? And that was my fifth one, so just five more. Five. Four. Three, two, and one. Good job. Okay, our next exercise is going to be some standing oblique crunches. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do five on each side. I want you to put your hand on your head like this, elbows out to the side. And I'm just driving my knee as close to my elbows as I can get. We're going to do it five times. So that's four, three, two, and one. Good. Other side, same thing. Hand on head, bringing, bringing knee the elbow as close as we can get it. This is also a little bit strenuous on the balance, so if you need a chair around, definitely. Just two more. And one. Phenomenal work, everyone. We're going to move to the ground now, so just meet me there when you're comfortable. A mat would definitely be nice. Our next exercise is going to be our push-ups. So a push-up, essentially, you can start in all fours, and we have a couple of options here. You can do an all-four push-up where you're on your hands and knees, and then you can pick your intensity based on how far apart your hands and knees are. The further apart your hands and knees are, the harder it's going to be. Or we can do our regular push-up, our level two, which is feet out. And then we're just coming down, pushing back up, nice, slow, and controlled. And similar to the squat, the speed at which you do the exercise will make it harder or easier. So if you'd like to get a bit of challenge in here, you can try to focus on lowering a little bit slower. But we're going to go for eight reps. Do whatever pace you want. Pick that intensity, knees or feet. I'm going to do it for my feet, and I'm doing eight. So I'm coming down right where my chin is above the ground, and I'm pushing straight back up, just like this. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good job. I hope that was difficult. So we're going to move into some stretching now. Our first stretch is going to be for our hip flexor. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm bringing my knee up like this, and I'm kind of just leaning my weight, keeping my back straight. That's very important. I'm keeping my back nice and straight, and I'm leaning into my hip here. And you really should feel that along the top of the hip and into the quad. That's what we're going for here. Again, nice and deep breaths, just 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Go ahead and switch sides. So, planting my other foot. Again, I'm leaning into my hips, making sure my back is straight. I'm not leaning forward or back or anything. I'm just coming as far as my low back will permit me with my hip flexor here. I feel that stretch all the way through that quad of that hip flexor. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Very good job. Okay, moving to a shoulder stretch now. So for our shoulder stretch, I want, to, I want you to be on your knees, and then you come down basically into a tabletop. And so what we're going to do here, it's called thread the needle. So I'm taking my hand and I'm placing it through this hole I've created with my tabletop. And I'm just trying to just spin the top of my trunk. I'm not leaning too far down. And I'm basically going to hold it like this for 10 seconds. Just five more. Four, three, two, and one. Same thing on this side. So now this is the hole I've created with my tabletop. I'm shoving my arm through. And I really should feel that my upper back shoulder region. It's just 10 seconds. 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, great. And from here, stay on your knees, and basically we're going to do a child's pose stretch. And if you're not familiar, basically you want to drive your butt, or backside, excuse me, into our heels like this. And as we do this, we leave our hands out extended in front of us. And you really should feel that through the low back. And if you have any discomfort in your knees, that's a sign that you have gone too far and you might want to come up a little bit, okay? And just five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Nice. Okay. Our next stretch is called the butterfly. So for those not familiar, this is going to stretch our inner thighs, our adductors. So what we're going to do here is I'm putting my feet together in front of me. And then I'm using my hands. And you can either have your hands on your feet like this, which is a little more difficult in my opinion. And then our second option is to have our hands behind us. They're planted firmly on the floor like this. As long as you do not have your forearms on your knees. We're going to hold like this for another five, four, three, two, and one. Phenomenal. I'll come up out of that. And so what we're going to do now is a hamstring stretch. Hamstring is the back of our upper leg, our nice and meaty thigh, the back of our thigh. And so what we want to do for this one is extend one leg fully out. And then we're going to bend our other leg, bring that foot into our thigh. If you can't do this, you can always put your foot just like this, whatever's comfortable for you. And so for this one, what we're going to do is stack our hands. We want middle fingers to line up. And we just want to reach, trying to focus on keeping our back straight just as far as you can go. We're going to hold this for another eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just sticking my arm down. You really should feel this along the back side of your leg. And I'm just reaching. I'm trying not to bend my back. I'm keeping my back nice and straight, just as far as it will let me. And just three more seconds. Two and one. Good. Okay. Next. Oh, you see that spin? That was pretty cool. Moving into some planks. So our planks are basically similar to a push-up in the sense that we're going to be in this position. Feet kicked out. And this is our, our level one plank. From here, or you can go onto your elbows like this, but we're gonna hold like this for 15 seconds. And remember, as we do this, to take some nice deep breaths the whole time. It's gonna be very important for us. And just five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and drop those knees. Good job. Don't forget to get some water. Take some, take some rest if you need it. We're gonna go into some crunches now. So for our crunch, we wanna lay with our back flat. Against the mat like this, my feet are planted, my knees are sticking up towards the ground, and I'm, ne I'm not going to take my low back off the mat for any reason, okay? And my hands are on the mat like this, and I'm using my abdominals to bring my shoulders up off the mat. Yep, and if you want to bump up to a level 2 intensity here, you want to just take a nice pause at the top in the crunch position. And we're just going to go for 10 reps, so we have 6 more, 5, 4, 3, Two and one. Good. You can go ahead and meet me. Oh, no. We're going to flip back over. Sorry, I forgot about the cobra pose. How can I forget? What an amazing stretch. So we're going to flip back on to our front side for our cobra pose. And essentially what we're going to want to do is plant our hands like a push-up in our tabletop. But this, we want to kick our legs out behind us like this and basically feel a stretch all the way through our abdominal muscles, which is going to be the front right here. And if you feel any type of tightness in your low back, that could be a sign that you might have come up too high and you just want to lower yourself a little bit down. And also, if you want to bring up the intensity just a smidge, you can plant those toes down and kind of put a little bit more force into your hands to really stretch out those abdominals. And just three, two, and one. We're going to slowly lower to the ground and relieve that low back pressure. Good. So. Our next stretch is going to be from the seated position. We're going to have our backside on the ground. And so for this stretch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant this foot down like this. And I'm going to take my upper back arm and place it against my knee while my other hand is planted on the ground. And I'm going to use both my arms to just introduce a little bit of spin into my back and get a nice stretch. Just go until you feel a little bit of tension. No, we shouldn't be feeling any pain here. And just five more seconds. Four, three, Two and one. Good. Same thing, other side. So I'm bringing my knee up, using my tricep and my hand on the ground behind me to create a little bit of torque in this spin. 
Just five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Ooh, my computer's about to shut off. Sorry about that. Okay. So from this position, we're going to do another stretch here. What we're going to do is now hug our arm into our body. So see how I've tucked my knee into my elbow, and now I have my other hand pushed it against my tricep. And I'm just going to bring my knee into my body as far as I can. And you should really feel that through the outside of your hip and your glute area. Um, and we just want to hold like this. Don't pull too hard. You don't want to get pain with this. Just five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Go ahead and let that go. We do the other side, same dealio. I'm pulling my knee into my elbow and I'm gripping my tricep, the back of my upper arm, excuse me. And I'm just pulling that leg into my chest until I feel some tension through my glutes, which is my backside, and then also my outer hip here. And just five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, our final stretch from the ground is going to be a quad stretch. So, what I want you to do is lay on your side. Doesn't matter which side you pick first. Basically, you want to lay completely on your side using your on this pillow here, you want to grab that foot and you want to pull that heel towards your backside until you feel some tension through the front of that leg in your quadriceps. And hold like here for five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and slowly let that leg out. Come up, other side. So same dealio, I'm going to lay on my arm as a pillow. I'm going to grab my foot and I'm going to drive my heel to my buttocks just like I'm doing. And then we're gonna hold this and we feel some tension in our quad. Just five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Go ahead and let that go slowly. We're gonna move to the top. So meet me there when you're ready. We're almost there, team. The next thing we're going to do is gonna go back into our marches. So we're gonna go pick those legs up, get our heart rate back up, and we're gonna do some stretches from the march. So basically, what I want you to do is drive your hands out to either side. And so this, for this first stretch, I want you to Imagine pulling your hands back. Someone's pulling both your hands back. And I want you to puff up that chest. We should feel this through the front of our chest. And we're just holding this for five, four, three, two, one. Good. And now we're going to come back to center with our hands still on either side. And we're going to reach out in front of us. I want you to imagine pulling those shoulder blades apart as hard as you can. Like so. I'll show you from the side as we keep our marches going. And I'm just trying to stretch out that back. Just five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, we're going to move into our side steps now. Back to our side steps. So again, I'm just stepping and tapping. And as we do this, we're going to stretch out our arms. So first is the bicep stretch. So I'm taking one arm. And see how I face my palm or my middle finger down towards the ground with my palm facing that way. Now, you might feel this stretch all the way through your form already and your bicep. But if not, what we can do is apply a little bit of pressure with our other hand to really get that stretch to go all the way through the front of our arm. Great. Just three, two, one. We're going to switch over to the other side. Same dealio. Face that hand down. If this already feels like a stretch through your whole arm, that's fine. But if you want to bring up that intensity, we can place some pressure on our hand and really get that forearm and that bicep stretched out. And just three, two, and one. Phenomenal. Okay. Our next stretch is going to be for our calf. So for this stretch, I want you to step forward, staggering the legs. Your front leg is going to be bent. Your back leg is going to stay straight behind you. And I want you to lean slightly forward until you feel the back of your lower leg being stretched out. You should feel this in your gastrocnemius and your soleus. There's two fancy ways to call your calf. Just five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Slowly come up out of that. Shuffle back. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, I'm stepping forward and bending my front leg. And I'm keeping my back leg nice and straight as I come forward until I start to feel a stretch in the back part of my lower leg in that calf. And just five more seconds here. Four, three, two, and one. Nice. Our final exercise will be our balance exercise. So what we're going to do here is we're going to imagine that there's a wire in front of us. We're going to place our hands on our hips and we're going to pretend that we're stepping over the wire and we're tapping our heels over it on either side. Coming up, tapping over. Like you're just stepping over a wire and we're doing 10 total on each leg. Ooh, scary. Make sure you have a chair in front of you if you feel like you might be placed in an uncomfortable position. 
three more, two, and one. Okay, and to close up, we're just gonna get our heart rates up one last time. What we're gonna do is touch the ground and then come and jump up. And if you don't wanna jump, you can touch the ground and then just throw your hands into the sky too for a low impact option. We're gonna do this for 10 seconds, nine, eight, give me everything you got, you're almost done. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And thank you ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of my warm-up. I appreciate you coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to stay hydrated through the rest of the day and have a good one.